this episode of Tori Talk. I am here with Sharnice Breeden, the owner of Hanging on a Hanger. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Thank you so much for being on my show. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited because I really wanted to talk to you because I know you had this booty for a long time and I know like like some history about you, so I wanted everyone to get a chance. You're my first girl on the show. Oh, so yeah. I can like, be first. look at clothes. Because I have all these I have all these boys so far, so it's really exciting. So we're gonna play a game. So we're gonna play okay. a little tea time with Tori game. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you three questions, rapid fire, the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? Oh god, I hate this. No, okay. it's gonna be good, it's gonna be good, I promise you, okay? So, do you have fabric, plastic, or wire hangers in your closet? Probably all three. <laughs> <laughs> and what color are they? Because I have like some I have like black and pink. Mostly black. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you had to do if you had to pick one, tall, dark, or handsome, and why? handsome okay why um you can be sure to be cute i mean you gotta be something to look at <laughs> i'm short so <laughs> that's only my choice too I'm you like, can be dark light i don't have a preference you have to think about your future <laughs> if you already have to but you don't like that's true for me it's like um, i don't know okay so last question for you is who is your style inspiration um i love tracy ellis ross i was hoping you would say yeah. why she just has so much versatility with her style like mm -hmm. she can really glam it up she can dress it down she just has a really strong sense of fashion mm -hmm. so i love to like just watch her and it's also her personality too i think mm -hmm. it matches her personality so i like her so what type of things does she wear that you feel like oh i wish like i would like i kind of pattern my style after that like is it like when she wears her pants i know she wears a lot of like I sequins think... dresses trying yeah. diana i haven't <laughs> gotten that far yet i'm not that brave <laughs> But um, definitely like the, the masculine look, mm -hmm. I love that. Like a big oversized jacket or, you know, kind of like a suit, like dressing almost like in a very masculine way, but it's still sort of feminine. So that's probably my favorite thing that she does. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like her too. Yeah. I can tell. So what is, oh yeah, no, today I know I kind of look like her today. Right. So one of the things I want to talk about and start with you is you are obviously a DC native. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about um, you growing up and like how you started with fashion and then like um yeah like just kind of start about like your childhood and let's talk about that okay so i mean specifically with fashion i think um historically people never really associated the dc area with fashion mm -hmm. for some reason um which is weird because we definitely have a very distinctive style like yes. you can kind of tell what we're into like if, if i see someone when i'm out of town that's from DC, I can tell. I, you know? I always say the same thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think um, just growing up here, you kind of absorb that. There's a lot of um, just strong, like, uh, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you know, look at Madness, you look at Hobo, you look at, you know, Sabi Auto and some of these brands that we grew up seeing. Yeah. Um, even now, Eat, you know, like mm -hmm. Malik is doing a phenomenal job with that, with that brand and with that line. And um, I think it's something that you, you know, if you're interested in fashion, you absorb that. Mm -hmm. um, and so just growing up, I always sort of had this aspiration to be a part of fashion and to maybe start my own thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to school for fashion. I did my undergrad um, specifically in fashion and like fashion marketing and retail management. Um, so the business aspect was something I was always mindful of. But I started, um, I would say sort of uh being a part of fashion in my mind at least when i was like in middle school <laughs> okay. so like you know obviously i wasn't doing anything but like you know fashion drawings yeah. teaching myself how to sew that type of thing um and then hanging on my hanger really started because i wanted to do kind of what you're doing like mm -hmm. offer a platform for people from this area that were like me you know yeah. people that aspire to do their own thing business owners um designers just creatives overall um, so that's how hanging on my hanger.com started basically just as a blog, um, highlighting people, interviewing people, writing up stories, just things in a selfish way. Like this is what I'm interested in. So yeah. I want you guys <laughs> to see it. Yeah. And, um, you know, that kind of turned into, um, curating a closet, so to speak. So okay. you can also shop the closet, which is how the boutique started. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm all around the city. I do pop-up shops, people buy online. So it's fun to sort of interact from the other side of things yeah. where before it was more like, Hey, I want to hear all about your brand. And now it's kind of like, Hey, I have, a, I have something to sell, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's basically, um, a curated closet of items that I either make myself. Mm -hmm. So like the handbags and jewelry, um, and then also resale and, I'm starting a new endeavor now, which is exclusive, <laughs> um, which is um, something called the Velvet Rack, which okay. is vintage and consignment, something I've always had a passion for. Um, I think when I was doing my undergrad, I did a, a full business plan, 
it was a school requirement, so it yes. wasn't like I was like, <laughs> you know, it was a, a school requirement to do a business plan, mm -hmm. and um, it was called Grandma's Closet. Okay. They hated the name, <laughs> um, but it was all about, you know, vintage and consignment, and I called it that because that was the first place that I started to shop mm. for vintage was in my grandma's, grandma's closet. closet. Um, and then, you know, traveling overseas, you really start to gain more of an appreciation for vintage items and, you know, different fabrics, and, you know, I fell in love with that whole thing, so now this is... Something new that I'm starting. Um, it's very, very new, very, very fresh. Um, but that's going to be uh, my upcoming endeavor for 2019. This is so exciting. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Uh, thank you. Hey, when you, so you spoke about overseas, so I had a question for you. Like, how was that? Because you were in Milan. Like, mm -hmm. what was your experience there? How was that? I've obviously never lived anywhere else. But, I mean, for you to be, like, wanting to do fashion and, like, that's what you went to yeah. school for. Like, how was it being over there where that's, like, nothing but yeah. fashion? So, for those of you who have never been out of the country is definitely something that you have to do and I don't just mean like vacation I mean like spend you know time doing things outside just like the yeah. touristy thing like really absorbing the culture of these places um, I gained a whole new appreciation for fashion mm -hmm. um, for people for being home like I definitely missed home but I mean it was a very sort of intensive learning experience like immediately I went there and we went to fashion week like how long were you there i was there for three months okay so it was like a study abroad mm -hmm. so i went to school over there but they like really showed us the industry like we went to these manufacturers you know first week we're in milan fashion week and i'm like in awe like a child you know like in a toy store it was yeah. like this is amazing um and just to see the differences between what we do here in fashion and what they do uh, we're much later mm -hmm. than they are like we sort of get the trends from you know overseas in a lot of cases unless mm -hmm. you consider things like street fashion yeah but high fashion it typically comes from Europe yeah um and so that was just it was awe inspiring like it was a, a huge deal for me and I came back and I felt like I was changed forever like I had this new sense of confidence I felt like I could do anything but it was a it was a great experience to be over there and I also went to Paris not for um, as long but that was really interesting to see um, you know their fashion and what they do over there as well not really good on customer service though oh they're not big on customer service at all <laughs> um don't know what that's all about but in Paris yeah they're not I've heard it they're not so nice. I was like I wanted to go to France and I, I know like they do speak English yeah. they're like no you're in France oh they so speak, you need to speak French yeah they're <laughs> sort of rude <laughs> that's what I always, sorry but, to anybody who be right so but, but, I mean, it could also be the equivalent of yeah. how people say people from D.C. are, like, standoffish or people from New York are mean. Yeah. Sometimes it's just that's, you know, just Literally. how the environment is. So, I don't know if it's that they're being rude. Yeah. But sometimes they are because they're like, you're American. <laughs> we spit on you. <laughs> like, they hate you. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it, it wasn't that good in customer service. But the fashion, honey, the food, everything. Everybody. I mean, the bread. Like, everything is just so, so good. Like, you can go over there and, like, gain weight for sure. But. But it's, I mean, it's a good experience. You have to do I it. have to get there. It's, I'm, you, I'm like 2019, it's like travel for me. I was just like talking about it. Like all of my Travel's friends, a new club. All of my family. <laughs> like, so I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I need to be like gone every yeah. couple months. Like somewhere else. I said, we're going to have to yeah, go alone. Yeah. I'm but I guess that's get okay out of here. too. That's okay. <laughs> but it's, it's a good experience. You okay. love it. Travel everywhere. And it looks, and Paris looks like DC. Oh, really? People say, well, so Paris was designed, well, D.C., if you look oh, at yeah, the Victoria Pierre uh, Lafont. Lafont, exactly. Was, yeah, he was from Paris. And uh, then, I you go this. there, and it's like, <laughs> people look at you like you're crazy. Like, this looks just like D.C. They're like, oh, okay. If they're not from D.C., they don't get it. But yeah. you feel at home. Like, you go there, and, uh, other than the people being rude yeah. to you. Like, you feel at home. So, yeah. So, you explained um, your new venture and why you named it, but why was Hanging on My Hanger? this because I know it started okay as a blog so I'm like how do we get this name? okay so I've gone through many phases <laughs> in fashion so I've taught fashion illustration and design that was mm -hmm. like my endeavor with working with kids okay like, I would travel around PG County and teach at different like rec centers um it, it was a part of the um something called the summer safe uh, program okay in PG County where the goal is to like get kids off the street okay um, at night so it would be like from 10 o'clock at night to 12 o'clock in the morning why your kids would be there <laughs> I don't know uh, but uh, for those kids that are you know summer they're yeah. left unattended or the parents are like well just come home when you get when you come home you know that type of thing yeah um and so that was really cool like teaching them and I would never know what I would show up to it could be eight-year-olds it could be 
15 year olds it could be all boys or whatever so i've done that um you know i've also done styling for um, individuals and worked with a, a local record um, label here um, so I did a couple of different things. The blogging thing was always something that was really personal to me because I okay. love to write. Um, and just, like I said, it's selfish. You just want to be like, this is my thoughts. And, <laughs> you know, I always love Sex in the City and like what Carrie did, you know, with her column. Um, and so that was just like my thing. So I had this styling group called Styling Asylum. Okay. Back in, I guess we started in like 2011. That lasted for a couple years. As I a part of that. Yeah, so as a part of that, we had a blog. Mm -hmm. It relied on contributions from other people. Okay. And that was cool, but I wanted to do something that was just me. So then Hanging on My Hanger started, and it was kind of like, this is all about me. This is, you know, what I do, my perspective of fashion, and where I shop, and what I wear. And then it slowly turned into, okay, I want to highlight other people. So that was the, the Hanging on My Hanger. It was supposed to be like, what's hanging on my, my hanger? hanger. And so when I talked to people for my blog, I was asking them, what's your favorite thing hanging on your hair? Okay. So I kind of flipped it, but I think it, it, it fits. Everybody likes the name. It's so cute. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I was, like, I, so, so far, like, everybody that I ask, they have, like, these super cool names and, like, these super, cool, yeah. like, cool stories to back it up. I'm just like, everybody's so creative. How yeah. did everybody figure out all but these then, names? Like, what's funny is that was just, like, I was like, oh, I'll just name it that. It wasn't, like... <laughs> It wasn't like a plan. Like, I didn't sit down with a mind map and yeah. think about it for days. I was like, well, I'll just name it this. And I didn't think twice about it because it was like, I really didn't care if anybody ever read it. It was just mm -hmm. like, this is my kind of like an online diary, fashion yeah. diary type of thing. So, um, I didn't really put that much thought into it. Sad to say, I wish I had like a interesting story. But that's story. good because it worked so well. So, yeah. you know, it was just like, it was meant to be that. Yeah. Because you didn't think about it and that was the name and it's like, everyone loves it and it's, I think it matches your brand and your personality so well. So it's like, oh. And I love, like, repetition. Like, alliteration of, yeah. of like, letters. I, I know. I love that. <laughs> I was like, I love I'm that. Like, <laughs> I love that. So everybody's like, oh, it's so catchy. It's easy to remember. But then it's hard to say sometimes. People are like, hanging, hanging on my hand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You got it. Yeah, I would say, I, I like it. So, um, I know you've done, like, um, I know you're talking about your uh, fashion week when you were in Paris, but um, you do fashion week with your brand. So, have you done D.C. and New York, and, like, what was that experience like, and, like, can you give us, like, a paint a picture of fashion week for you? So, I would always travel to New York. Mm -hmm. um, here in D.C., I always love to be a part of Indie Fashion Week. Okay. Um, shout out to Harley. Um, <laughs> I always, and he's he always is just so supportive, like... Sometimes it's really hard. I don't know if that's like a DC thing, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's really hard to find people that are uplifting and like supportive mm. and, and want to share ideas and, and want to say, you're great. And I'm going to tell other people that you're great. Yeah. It's kind of difficult to find that. Um, so Indie Fashion Week is really cool. And I feel like it was appropriate for my brand because mm -hmm. it's all about independent designers. You know, that whole shop small, you know, shop local is huge to me you mm -hmm. know to be able to take money that i work for and give it to someone that works hard to start their business someone that looks like me or someone that's from this area like that's a big deal like you putting your heart and soul into something that's your baby i want to support you yeah um so i try to participate in any fashion we here in dc um in new york i've always sort of year after year gone up there for um new york fashion week mm -hmm. um and that was something I did for the first time as a student, too, which, again, oh, really? was like, yeah, I went to New York Fashion Week, and I was, like, in a show. And we did, like, the smaller shows yeah. because we were students, and so yeah. it was kind of like, we don't want all these kids in here. And I remember, like, sitting right behind Angela Simmons, and I was like, oh, my God, that's Angela Simmons. <laughs> like, it was such a big deal. So that was always fun. Yeah. Um, but, again, I've always tried to do things that were more appropriate for my brand. Yes. So there is... Um, uh, organization called small boutique fashion week okay um and so i initially as a blogger mm -hmm. you know i would go as media and i would go in and i would report and i would take photos and you know be in the box with the photographers which i hate by the way yeah, so many people it, and it's so aggressive <laughs> yeah. because the photographers that are at the end of the runway they're in the box yeah they um are fighting to get the best shot yep. so they like put their stuff in a specific position and that's their spot and yeah. little old me I'm like there just with my camera and they're like you gotta <laughs> get out the way so that was like an interesting experience I hate that so I like <laughs> to just be someone who sits in the audience mm -hmm. as a regular attendee and take photos that way because it's kind of like I'm bringing you my experience 
Um, but I did that for a couple years. And then I said, well, you know, when I started the, the online boutique, I said, well, I'm going to be a vendor and mm -hmm. see what that's like. So I started to do, that was probably my first time vending. And like, it was a 10 hour long thing because they have shows all day long. Mm -hmm. Um, don't think I'll do that again. <laughs> that's you don't? Great. 10 hours? It, that's a long day. That, well, I worked nine hours at my regular job. So come on, uh, get your coffee. Take your snack. You, you can know you can do yeah, it. Sure. <laughs> that sounds like a no. Maybe. I don't know about that. <laughs> Ten hours is way too long. Yeah. For, you know, and then it's kind of like you just are putting yourself out there. Like, yeah. I hope someone buys my stuff. Like, yeah. hey, you know, like you got to, you know, interact with people. And that was a, a phenomenal experience. It was yeah. great. Um, so I did that a couple times in New York. I also did one in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I just travel. Like, I just, you know, I'll do... When I find an organization that I really like and I feel like it's appropriate and it matches well with what I do with my brand, I mean, I'll I'll just ride with them. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, if you ride with me, I'm riding with you. So, you know, I try to do those both. The small boutique fashion week and also indie fashion week because I feel like it, it just is appropriate for what I do. So, you touched on something that I think that was interesting because in almost every interview that I've done thus far, and for the ones who are like fashion designers or have like boutiques and things, etc., they have always been saying to me, it is known that DC people do not support each other. So I don't know what this is about, but I have heard this in every have single... Have you you've never experienced that? At, well, because this is like, with what I was doing, you know, like in my personal job, no. Mm -hmm. And then when I was doing like stuff at Fox, like, that's yeah. a network. So like for like small business owners, you know, like we're just starting to get into, you know, the stuff yeah. that we have with the family business. And they have been telling me time after time, like, we do not support each other. And this is what the show is about to like how yeah, I do it from here because exactly. I feel like there's so like you said, so there's much so much talent. talent here, so much opportunities and like we don't really highlight it. Mm -hmm. So why do you feel like that is? Because hopefully like we can start to combat this because yeah. like everyone keeps telling I, me this. So I agree with you, but I also see why people say that. Mm -hmm. So they always say we're like crabs in a barrel. Yes. Um, I don't know if I'll just align myself in a really good way with good people mm -hmm. or if that's just a myth because I really I mean I really have found good people that are like willing to support yeah. you know and that I know I have a passion for supporting others and like I'll even do that on my Instagram just randomly I'll see something that I really like and I'll be like hey you know support this person because it's needed but then you also have to say well why did I get like that? Did yeah. I experience something where it was like, you know, people didn't want to kind of give you a chance yeah. or didn't want to support you because you were doing the same thing? Like, this conversation about Nicki Minaj and <laughs> Cardi B is just like, it's just going on and on and on for yeah. way too long. Forever. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, I think sometimes it does happen when you see someone that's doing the same thing as you and it's kind of like, you know, I, if I support them, that's kind of taken away from my own thing. But mm -hmm. not really, you know. Yeah. I think that it's room for everybody. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've interviewed or highlighted several individuals who seemingly do the same thing. But not really. I think it's room for everyone. And everyone has their own take on something. You know, I may talk to two girls who have vintage stores. Mm -hmm. They're not ever going to have the same thing, you know no. what I mean? So even if you have a resale store, if you compare, you know, um, someone who sells trendy items to someone else who does the same thing, it's still going to be different, you yeah. know what I mean? So I think the more we support each other, the stronger the reputation will grow, um, the more interested people will be in you and what other people do and their talents. And I think we're on a good path. So yeah. even if historically we were <laughs> crabs in a barrel or whatever yeah. people say i think we're headed in the right direction okay yeah so that makes me very happy to hear because i was just like i yeah. have got i don't want to hear this anymore like i want to stop this whole thing but don't like, you hear bad things about people that let's say a wale yeah don't okay. you hear people tear him down a lot <sighs> yeah maybe that's yeah. where people get this that's true you know that's true but i think what affects what would affect me more is like if it was people that I you know my friends and my family that were like oh yeah girl you're doing great in my face and I'm like oh she is awful like you know and that happens and it's like they don't really not. believe in you so that's yeah. probably what would would affect me more than just like Regular oh you gain popularity and then people are like Ugh, I hate her you know yeah so 
Well, I know of you, and I think you've done great Thanks. things. And <laughs> I saw you, and I bought a top. I will you show did. you guys a picture. <laughs> my little shirt, and um, and it was earrings. at Art All Night. Yeah, and my earrings. Yes, yes. I, they're on the Instagram. <laughs> um, so how did Art All Night come about for you? Because I feel like Art All Night is like such a big thing that we do in DC, and yeah. it kind of gives everyone a like all creators of all types like yeah. a platform so yeah. like how long have you been doing that and how was your experience this year that was my first time okay. being a part of it yes so that was a huge deal for me I was like so excited and I'm a very sort of like I find it difficult to like talk about myself Why, like, because I'm I'm normally on your <laughs> side of things yeah, I'm like yeah, so tell me you know so it's kind of difficult for me to be like yeah you know do this or do that and you know, when I, like, reached out and, like, text my friends and be like, hey, I'm doing art all night. At first, I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. But then I'm like, this is art all night, you it's know? It's a big deal. Like, I've been, like, participating as just a spectator, like, mm -hmm. going to the events. Maybe since, like, 2011. I'm not sure when it actually started. I think that was around the time when it started. Mm -hmm. And to see it grow and get so big, and it's, like, literally, like, so, you know, just so many people that you get to see, whether it's in fashion or you know, arts and, you know, dancers and poets. And it's, like, amazing, like, to see something like that in your own city. Yeah. Because we don't really get to see that every single day. We don't. Um, And, you know, you can go downtown and go to a museum, but that's not coming from us. You yeah. know what I mean? That type of artwork, that type of talent. So that was my – this was my first year doing it. Um, And it was a great experience, like, to see people that lived in that neighborhood or didn't live in that neighborhood, like – Normally, if I will um, participate in an event as a vendor, mm -hmm. that's like the crowd that I normally see. I'll see people, the same people, but to participate in something like that, I mean, it's all races, all nationalities, you know, all, all ages. Over the city. Yeah, everybody's just like doing the same thing at the same time, and it's, the energy is just so good. So that came about through Harley <laughs> um, from, you know, that does um, any <laughs> fashion week. He does a ton of stuff all year long. Um, and is incredible and incredible incredible support to mm -hmm. people like me mm -hmm. um, Especially just getting started. So that was my first time and it was a great experience. It was a fashion show They had a comedian come out. So it was awesome and I got to meet people like what's so fun to me is People that I follow or they follow me on Instagram. They're like, oh, I, I follow you on Instagram I, You posted this I came out just to see you that is oh, that's Incredible. So yeah, that's that's like huge to me. So because it's like you you feel the support so I saw some of the things on your hanger at that event. How are you okay letting some of these things go? Because I think I would be bad at this. Because if I'm buying these things or I'm making these things, people give them like, "Ooh, this is cute for me." Yeah, this is cute for me. And it's like, it's how hard. do you say, "Okay, this is for it's everyone hard. else to keep"? It's <laughs> really easy when it's not in my size. <laughs> okay, that's the easiest part. Because especially when doing the vintage and like consignment now. Mm -hmm. I'll find like really really nice things um, like I right now have two fur coats that I have not posted <laughs> wait <laughs> a minute <laughs> okay I she's, mean like, she's not gonna put these online because I have to go look at them first yeah and I almost feel like I can I'm just like I'm like it's I should be trying to sell them yeah. but I'm like <laughs> I don't want to sell them so it's really hard I don't know it's I mean it's not that hard yeah. because I can have one and you can have one, but <laughs> it's only two. <laughs> I know it's it's hard, but I mean I and I love clothes like I love and you know brands are one thing, but just the aesthetics and like the beauty and like the fabrication and the colors and mm -hmm. you know putting things together like I'm I've always been very attracted to that like putting something together or. Um, just admiring something, even if I don't wear it, which is weird, which is why I have... I'm never going to wear those coats. I'm never <laughs> going to wear it. Maybe for New Year's Eve or yeah, something. Yeah, I think you can find something. But the goal is to sell it. So it yes. is hard to let go, but mm -hmm. I, I think I handle it well. <laughs> but I'm glad you liked some of the stuff you saw. Yes, I did, because I was, like, going back and forth between the shirt that I got, and I think it was, like, the pineapple one. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I still have that, by the way. Oh, okay, good. Because <laughs> I was like, but okay, which one can I wear now? And I was okay, I feel like that was more summer. I can I maybe know. wear the other one more. But I was really struggling with that. I think I stood there at your booth for, like, yeah, yeah, 15, yeah, 20 yeah, you minutes. you were there for a while. Both, both of the shirts like, in my hand. I was like, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> um, okay, so one thing I want to know 
about your business? Like, so because it's something that you, you have like a business that you're selling something, mm -hmm. like what would you say like some of your challenges have been and some of like the most um, kind of like rewarding moments have been for you thus far with this? Because it's been how long for Hanging On My Hanger now? So Hanging On My Hanger as a, as a website has been around for four years four now. Years. Okay. Um, so I think the, the most rewarding, I mean, it's always rewarding. Like I said, when people come up to me and they're like, Oh, I, you know, or not even in a, in a selfish way, um, to highlight maybe a store, um, that not too many people know about, or at mm -hmm. least no one in my circle knows about. Yeah. And then a friend of mine or someone I know will say, yeah, I, I went to that store that you put on your blog and it's like. I'm glad that I could do that. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that I love to like connect Close that loop. people. Yeah. yeah, and just kind of, you know, know that what I'm doing is having an effect, even if it's just on one person. Um, but making my very first sale from my website mm -hmm. was a huge thing to me. I was like, yes, I have a right. I'm like, yes, this is great. Because it's not, you know, when people, when you're in a, at an event and you're, you know, selling things, it's right there. So it's yeah. convenient that people want to buy stuff. But for someone to type in your site, actually purchase something and then give you feedback on their purchase like that's a huge thing you know so i think that was probably the most rewarding um moments some of the most rewarding and the most challenging the most challenging um for me is consistency okay like i think there's there's a way to overcome anything but you know when you have so many things going on and you're trying to be an entrepreneur, but you also work a regular job. And, yeah. you know, you have social life. So you're like, um, I'm off work today and I really should be working on my business. But, I don't know, I just want to go to the bar and, like, hang out with my friend. It's, happy hour. Yeah, happy hour is the <laughs> best hour. Happiest hour. <laughs> the happiest hour. <laughs> so, um, I think that's just the most, it's internal. Yeah. Just that challenge of maintaining consistency and being disciplined enough to say, yes, I want to go out and have a drink. Yes, I want to be lazy and watch Netflix, but I have things I need to do for my business. So I try to, you know, in my own way, um, no matter what happens, I try not to beat myself up. Mm -hmm. You know, if a week goes by and I haven't done anything for my business or done anything for my website, I just say, okay, the week's over. Now get back to whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. Even if a month goes by and we go through our moments, you know, things happen. You might be depressed. You might be working on something and that's taking up all your time or whatever the case may be get over it yeah and get back to work don't dwell on it and be like oh i should have done this i should have done that um and just you know try to have that discipline like get back to it whenever it's kind of like working out in the gym yeah you know you work out you're like yes I'm, I'm gonna get my gym membership i'm gonna lose 10 pounds and then the first time you work out you're like yes i accomplished something and then you don't go yeah, back you don't go gym <laughs> for weeks and then as the days go by you feel worse and worse and worse about yeah. not doing it the day before and the mm -hmm. day before you're like well i'm just gonna eat a donut now you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> yeah. don't eat the donut just go back to the gym exactly. so that's kind of what i work on actively every single day um and just trying to be consistent and trying to be disciplined because it's your one woman show you yeah. know you are you know when you're doing it by yourself and i literally do everything yeah. by myself and i don't say that to be boastful because that's not always a good thing yeah um, it's good to have a team. It's good to have support. It's someone you can say, hey, I need to do this, so can you work on that? Um, but as of right now, it's just me, so mm -hmm. got to have that discipline. That's the biggest challenge. So you do fashion design. I know, like, you're into, <laughs> well, yeah, but you, like, you do more of your accessories. Do you think that, like, because I know you do make some things and some things, you know, mm -hmm. you acquire the pieces. Do you think that now with your new venture that you might try to start making more of your own things? I definitely would love to do that. And um, I, it's something I've been thinking about. Like, for now, I do, you know, I'll do the jewelry and mm -hmm. accessories. I make the handbags, of course. Um, but, like I said, I started to teach myself how to sew when I was, like, 12. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's something that's been sort of, like, you know, on me. Like, in the back, yeah, like, in the back of my mind. Like, I really want to get into making, you know, a full line mm -hmm. at some point. I don't know when that's going to be. It's definitely something I would love to work on um, in the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of like, don't put it off if it's something you want to do. I yeah. don't want to give myself excuses, but um, I would love to eventually do a whole line if I could. That's so yeah. exciting. <laughs> so, uh, kind of last question for you. What would you say for anyone who wants to, like, eat from our area from any other area, that wants to get into something similar to this? Um, or just wants to do a business in general? Like, what would you let them know? 
Okay, here's the advice. <laughs> um, so here, here's my advice for that. And it's going to sound dumb, maybe, or even cliche, but just do it. You know, I think I, I have friends, and like I said, I think I've aligned myself really well, unintentionally, but I have a lot of friends who are stylists, um, you know, bloggers, store owners, um, just entrepreneurs, yeah. you know. Look at what you're doing. Like, yeah. this is a phenomenal thing that you're doing here to be able to offer your talent of talking. <laughs> Thank you. And, and and turn that into giving other people a platform yeah. to share their talent, to share what they do. Um, and I'm sure this requires planning. Yeah. Time. But I think sometimes people think too much about things. Yeah. Um, like, for instance, I had a friend and, you know, she's like, I want to start a blog. I want to start a blog. I was like, just do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. That sounds silly. Okay. Uh, duh. I'm just going to do it. But I need to do this first and I need to do that. I said, well, just do a first, just do one post. Mm -hmm. Just do one post. What's stopping you from doing? What do you need? Yeah. Well, I want to get, you know, my office in order. Like, I have to have the perfect space to be able. You can work on that, but post something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the longer you prolong it, the harder it's going to be to get started. And before you know it, you look up in that blog idea, that thing you wanted to do someone else has started it mm -hmm. not saying you still couldn't do it too but it's like why wait like if it's something you want just do it you yeah. know people feel like they have to have the perfect everything i have to have this equipment and this kind of lighting and okay yeah mike maybe the first time won't be yeah. you know the yeah. quality you like but do it for yourself yeah even if it's something you don't post or say you want to be a designer even if it's something that you make and you don't sell it just do it get yeah. started Whatever you need to do to get started, just do it and take that first step. That's my advice. And then build on things like I was talking about the discipline, yeah. the consistency, maybe building a team for yourself. If it's something you don't know how to do, outsource. If you need a logo and you're not a designer, yeah. you're not an artist, <laughs> don't try to do that yourself. <laughs> no. Get someone <laughs> to do that for you, yeah. you know? Um, but that's, that's my advice. Yeah. Well, also, I want to thank you so much. Thank you. Um, this was such a great time, such a great experience. I'm so happy you were able to come thank and talk you. to me and be on my show. <laughs> um, please let everyone at home, excuse me, at home know where they can find you on your social media, okay. your um, your website, and where they can follow and purchase and all that information. For sure. So you on Instagram, you can find um, hanging on my hanger at hanging on my hanger, um, spelled exactly how it sounds. Um, and you can also follow me as well, Nisi.com, that's N-I-E-C-Y-D-O-T-C-O-M. And of course, go to the website for, you know, what I mentioned, you know, highlighting, learning more about, you know, local talent, um, but also to shop the closet and that's hanging on my hanger.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you all so much for tuning in. Look forward to speaking to you very soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.